for Lethbridge. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And because of the this way with the time, I'll keep my eye on you, and, and uh, you can give me the signal. But I feel like I will be able to talk for the full five to seven minutes or whatever I have on Bill C-560. And I'm speaking in support of the bill, which is the bill to uh, amend the Divorce Act to make equal shared parenting to present of arrangement for children following the divorce of their parents, except in proving cases of abuse or neglect. Now, uh, I must admit that when this bill first became, uh, was, was first tabled and started to get some public attention, and I started to pay attention to it, I was uh, a little bit surprised to see how controversial it became. I expected that most people would be in favor of it. Uh, I guess that's part of the reason why we have this debate, because sometimes its assumptions are challenged. And I'll, I'll say that the arguments against the bill um, seem as, as, uh, as sincere as, as, um, as those of us who are arguing in favor of it. So I don't want to uh, say anything about the, uh, the malintent of people who disagree with me on this bill. But I will say at, at home, uh, when, when I do um, have uh, the occasional uh, constituent come talk to me about uh, divorce law and um, family law problems, almost, well, in fact, without exception, the problems have been fathers feeling like they weren't getting um, uh, fair representation through the courts, that the whole system was stacked against fathers having access to their children. Now, I want to make very clear that this bill, or at least my support for this bill, is not about preserving father's rights. It's not about w mother's rights. It's about the children's rights, but not just the children's rights, but the good of the children. And we talk about, when we talk about the good of the children, uh, sometimes uh, I wonder why, why we uh, always say, oh, it's the good of the children. Why do, why do children have this emphasis that uh, you know, other human beings don't, don't have. It's not that uh, children are more important, but the children haven't done anything to, to cause the grief that they receive from the mistakes that adults make. And uh, also, children just happen to be the people who turn into to adults who do run the world. And if we uh, have the children's best interest at heart and uh, in mind, and we actually look after the children's best interest, by extension, we cannot we cannot fail in having the best interests of society as a whole. And uh, beyond children in and of themselves, when we have our, the best interests of families at, at heart and the best interests of families in our minds, and we look after the interests of families, we cannot fail but to look after the interests of society because family is the founding unit, the, the fundamental unit of society. And when we do harm to the family, we cannot avoid doing harm to society. So whatever decisions we make in this place or uh, any other place that we make decisions for all of society, it must focus on children and not just children as individuals, but children as parts of families. We live in a time when most men and boys are essentially fatherless. If men and boys are fatherless, so are the daughters. We live in a time when uh, we, we lament uh, violence against women, where we lament um, irresponsibility. And uh, we can't teach our boys to treat our uh, women properly without fathers, and we can't, uh, we can't teach our daughters. Uh, it's, it's more difficult to have daughters have a sense of who they are without their fathers as well. Whatever the circumstances, when f children do not have a father in the home, they find themselves on their own to figure out life, and they find out that it is a lonely place to be. And they uh, often will be uh, r ruled by their fears and anger and boredom, where lots of times all they seek is the affection of a father. And their many addictions all come out of this fatherless place within them, a fundamental uncertainty in the core of their being. Uh, we, our, our uh, 
art, our, our literature, our, our poems, our movies, our, our novels. There's so many written about uh, children seeking out their parents and in particular their fathers. Uh, lots, lots of stories that are uh, real life stories and uh, are about adopted children who at a certain age have an inner angst in their soul to find out who their parents are. They'll, they love their adopted parents and see them as their parents, but there's something inside of our souls that seeks to be connected with our fathers and our mothers. But this bill, of course, is in response to the fact that in today's current divorce law, it is fathers who are usually left out of the children's lives, and by extension, the children are left out of the father's lives. The appeal of fatherhood, what does fatherhood do? What does it teach people in general, kids in general? It's the newfound position as a requirement of the good life. It shows people how to fulfill duty. It binds you to other people in general. It binds you for real to a woman or to, to, an, to another adult. It's the only thing that still can do this. Nowadays, um, marriage is instantly reversible and a negotiable contract, but fatherhood is not. And by this, this law, we will bring fathers closer to the hearts of the children, the children to the fathers. And this bill may not be perfect yet, but it's on the right track. We need to bring it to committee so that we can examine it closer. And the concerns that are uh, that people have brought up about this bill can be addressed in committee. We, need, we, do, we cannot let it die at this point. We need to bring it on to the next level. So I encourage everyone in this house to vote in favor of this bill to bring it to committee. Thank you very much. And, uh